Wastewater leaves the home through a sewer pipe and enters the septic tank. It's temporarily held in the tank's first chamber as the primary treatment process begins. Heavier solids start to separate and settle to the bottom of the tank as the lighter greases and fats or scum rise to the top. Gradually, a layer of clarified liquid is formed between the solids and scum. Bacteria start working to decompose the solids, creating a sludge that accumulates at the bottom of the tank. Approximately 15 to 20 percent of the solids cannot be decomposed by bacteria and will remain in the tank. The anaerobic bacteria is present in our waste, our human waste. By incorporating that into the tank, it breeds. The, the key aspect is that you can't breed it any faster than you can feed it. So if you're putting um, things in the septic system that are antiseptic, it can actually be detrimental to the digestion of those sludges and or the natural decomposition of, of the activated sludge. Liquid, leftover solids, and scum move to the tank's second chamber and the separation process continues. A properly functioning septic tank should remove approximately 75% of the suspended solids, oil, and grease from the affluent. Over time, sludge and solids will gradually fill the tank, leaving little room for the clarified liquid. To avoid problems, a qualified professional should clean and inspect the tank every two to three years. The partially treated wastewater leaves the tank within 24 to 36 hours and then passes through an effluent filter. Effluent filters are very effective at trapping solids that still remain in wastewater following primary treatment. Effluent filters allow only clarified wastewater to be released from the tank. Even with all the pretreatment, we still get a tremendous amount of suspended solids that collects on the um, filtering mechanism on the cartridge. This is not unusual. It's another method to filter out suspended solids out of the water before you're putting it either into the uh, soil absorption field, mound, whatever system it may be. All new septic systems should be built with effluent filters. Older systems can and should be retrofitted with the filters. In a gravity type system, once the clarified wastewater leaves the tank, it flows through a distribution box. From the distribution box, it's carried by a network of solid pipes that lead to a series of trenches. Effluent moves through the trenches and slowly enters the soil. Once in the soil, the final treatment processes begin. Some trench systems might also use a pump to help distribute effluent to the soil absorption field. Other systems may be elevated or mounted to help with effluent distribution. Bacteria in the soil successfully break down any remaining contaminants in the clarified effluent. The best location for an absorption field is an area with deep, well-drained soils. Other types of septic systems utilize secondary treatment before the effluent reaches a soil absorption field. Examples of these systems are constructed wetlands, sand filter, and recirculating media filter. Indiana law requires a soil inspection before a septic system permit can be issued. The inspection must be done by a health officer or registered professional soil scientist.